Ladies and gentlemen, it's Phil here. Welcome to the After Hours Gaming League Season 3. Of course, we are into week number 5 now. We've progressed quite far through the tournament and uh, we've seen some really interesting games this week. We're going to be having a look at, uh, well, two of the big corporate heavyweights that are out there. Of course, perhaps, you know, this league is filled with a lot of corporate heavyweights. But these two, of course, we have uh, some of the big guns. Starting up at the top right-hand side, playing for Team Facebook. You know who Facebook is. It is our Blue Terran player, Gunslinger. And his opponent down on the bottom left-hand side as our Red Protoss player, there's the sound, is playing for Ernst & Young, of course, one of the big four accounting firms in the world. It is Scan. Now, I have done a, uh, a cast of these uh, these two teams previously, actually, as part of the pre-season uh, pre matches that went on. And there were some really, really interesting games between these guys, and uh, I am really expecting that we'll see something pretty cool come out of all of these. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll go to Game 5. The last couple of weeks we've uh, seen some really fantastic matches uh, that have taken us to the ace, uh, the ace match in the end, and it has been really, really cool. So hopefully we'll see that this time. Of course, uh, we do at the moment. These guys are ranked... Uh, I think both of these players are ranked around Platinum or something around that level, I believe. At least in Heart of the Swarm. Um, someone actually mentioned in one of the, uh, the previous... Uh, games a little while ago that uh, you know sort of the you know it's a new day with Heart of the Swarm there's all new tactics that come about there's new units there's new strategies all these kinds of things and uh, I think it is a relevant point perhaps just to consider uh, for at least for the after hours gaming league right now we'll sort of consider just people's uh, current leagues as where they are right now uh, but then again, you know, you do have to take into context the fact that uh, uh, the Heart of the Swarm uh, placement system was a little bit weird at first. And, uh, you know, some people getting into GM, some were, you know, not probably not that worthy of GM. And then, uh, you know, some people who should have been a lot higher getting into bronze and all these kinds of things. And you have to fight your way back out of there. But uh, either way. I have no doubt we'll see some quality games from these two players. I think I did. Uh, I did do a cast of uh, one of the one of the preseason matches when we actually did the cast of Facebook versus uh, Ian White it was. Um Actually, it did actually feature Scan, so I have seen Scan before. Looks like he is going to uh, just play standard for the moment, going up to double gas. This has actually become very standard in uh, in Heart of the Swarm. Protoss players going up to double gas just as a way to make sure they have the uh, the tech available to react to things like Hellbats. Of course, one of the the big, uh, very contentious points of Heart of the Swarm for the moment, I would say, is the Hellbat. Of course, uh, coming out and you know just blasting their way through mineral lines left, right. And center and it has been uh, the bane of many people's ex existence whether it be in tvp tvz or even tvt uh things have been quite interesting as of late in fact today on the day that i am recording this the hellbats did get a slight nerf to their cargo space so you can only fit two inside a medevac but not going to affect these games. These are all before the patch, so keep that in mind when we're going through some of these games if you do see the hellbats they are still only worth two slots in a medevac so, for our Terran, it looks like we are going up to double racks, so maybe a little bit of early pressure here. Of course, a, uh, quite a few Marines are going to pop out with that reactor there from Gunslinger. He's still continuing to uh, get a, that second racks up with a tech lab. Probably going to pick up some stim pretty quickly here. I'm just a little bit, uh, just a little bit, you know, unsure of exactly what he's going to go for. Because, of course, a, uh, a one base Protoss against a one base Terran, generally your Protoss player is going to win. Of course, depending on whether you catch your opponent out, of course. Uh, you know, you have to keep an eye on where the units are wandering around the map, whether there is uh, going to be an expansion somewhere. So all these kinds of things are good to keep in mind. And it looks like uh, Gunslinger, well, he's going to head back out with an SCV. Does get caught by a Stalker. He's going to find that there are a couple of units coming across. The SCV gets taken down. And this will probably force all these Marines to come back. And uh, it looks like, yeah, he's going to... Well, no, he's actually just going to stay up there in the natural, just in case he needs to defend that quite quickly. Back at home for uh, Scan. He's got a couple of extra gates coming up. We're going to see three in total. So we'll have... Uh, all of those there. We've also got a Stargate is also out. There is no, uh, where is it? Okay, so we got a Mothership Core, but no Stargate units just as of yet. So, uh, there is an Oracle producing now. He just had to wait for a little bit more gas to come up, I think. Uh, but he is going to Crota Boost that out. Of course, the Oracle is doing a, a wonderful job inside Mineral Lines themselves with their, uh, 25 damage 
to light units and so that of course is a big threat that you have to look out for in Heart of the Swarm when you're playing against the Protoss uh, and again it's sort of the same sort of situation whether you're in uh, PvZ, PvT or PvP even the Oracles can come about and can do quite a bit of damage but Gunslinger just marching his way across the map does actually uh, have vision of the Protoss units that were there but decides to ignore them I'm not sure what was going on with that but his stim is still on the way we do have concussive shells for the Marauders so it was actually that tech that got researched first the Oracle now heading across he's going to get a free ride into that mineral line and uh, just with a few uh, a few shots here this uh, this uh, oracle is probably going to do a ridiculous amount of damage here he comes uh, it looks like gunslinger was reacting just in time and in fact scan was not reacting in time uh, unfortunately did not catch the SCVs out before uh, they were able to retreat so they have uh, fallen back for the moment a couple of these Marines gonna come through interestingly enough Oracle smashed through the Marines so despite having five Marines there it looks as if the Oracle is still able to do a sizable amount of damage does get a couple of kills on the SCVs but not really too much and down she goes so the Oracle not really getting a, uh, a massive amount of damage done there, but this has allowed Scan back at home to make sure that he is all protected. He's got a lot of gateway units out right now, including a lot of Stalkers, which is going to be an interesting factor in the upcoming battle. It looks like there was another Oracle that uh, flew across the map and was able to make it into the uh, the natural base there. It did stop the command center from uh, completing, and it looks like the worker count is still relatively low for this point of the game. Both players sticking on uh, one base for the moment and only going for their natural in in fact, uh, Scan hasn't even moved towards his natural at all. It looks like he wants to put on some gateway pressure. As I said, we got a lot of stalkers. We've got uh, a total of just the, the four gates, uh, no three gates, sorry, back at home. There is a robo now as well, which will be able to get a uh, an observer or two out, perhaps even uh, look to give him the opportunity of going towards that Colossus tech, but I'm not sure how I feel about this attack here from Scan. He's got, uh, that's a lot of bio units there, and of course those Marauders do have Concussive Shell. They've now got Stim as well, throws down the Time Warp to start to try and stop them from retreating. A couple of very good force fields there from Scan, but the problem is, is that he has no uh, zealots to tank at the front and marauders are just going to rip apart quite a lot of this and despite a second at good time warp there that was able to help out this actually means that the mothership core was not able to recall the units which may have been a better decision in the end she's going to have to retreat up to the north side there and uh, most of the units did get destroyed by gunslinger so he's going to put himself in a decent position right now he's currently up to 27 scv still not a huge amount but uh, of course now that he has his natural base up and running switching that over into an orbital command while his opponent is getting his own natural going. So, things have been, uh, well, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say passive, but they've sort of just been a couple of small attacks. We've seen uh, Scan just get smashed apart by by that bioforce, despite a couple of good force fields. And it looks like uh, with this uh, with the bioforce continuing to get larger, we've also got a factory now being uh, added in for Gunslinger. Got plus one weapons and a second eBay about to get constructed. There we go. So we got double eBay. So he is going to definitely look towards a bio play. Is our blue Terran from Facebook. It looks like he's now going to scout out and try and see what's going on. He doesn't really have too much intel. Hasn't really wasted any scans uh, on uh, trying to find out what's going on. Instead, he's thrown down the mules inside the mineral line and uh, has been able to up his production just a little bit because of that. But now, with uh, Scan, he's got his, uh, well, he's got his natural up and running here. His, wor his work account is starting to climb. He's up to 32 in total. And uh, it looks as if, well, we're still just going to play relatively passive for now. But Scan is going to have something to say about that. Flying inside the main base of Gunslinger is able to pick off one SCV. Maybe able to get a couple of extra ones. But unfortunately, there is a turret there. The SCVs are lining themselves, jumping onto that uh, <laughs> the, uh, the mineral patch there. Did limit the amount of kills that went down. But as we can see, the worker kill tally still sitting at 12, which is not too bad for Scan. He's kept his opponent at bay. The only issue I have is that he hasn't really been building his own back at home. We've had these uh, breaks in the production, as we can see. We've got a bit of Chrono Boost still available for him to use, but he is getting started on the Colossi. So once those come out, really going to add a lot of firepower to his forces. He's also got a second Robo on the way. In fact, that's a Forge right there, but the Robo is... Uh, there it is. We've got a double Robo coming in. So this is actually a really interesting sign of what he wants to go for here. Probably going to add in a couple of Colossi, of course, a very powerful unit, uh, but they can be dealt with relatively easily by a few uh, by a few Vikings. And so, as we can see, Gunslinger does know that there is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure he actually did a scan there and may have seen uh, that there was a Colossus somewhere, but uh, 
where did it go? It's actually still inside the main, so maybe you didn't see it. But uh, it looks like the Oracle is going to get inside the natural, getting a couple of kills off just the whole position there, and that's in the perfect spot so that it doesn't run into the turrets. But the Marines come along with combat shields and stim. There are just way too many Marines there, and the turret finishes off. So. Gunslinger, finally safe in his mineral line, at least for now. I mean, this Oracle is not going to have a fun time if she tries to push into uh, any of these mineral lines here. There's a turret protecting both sides of uh, each of the mineral lines at the main and the nat. And with a lot of Marines out now, he's starting to uh, really have a lot of firepower. The only the only issue is that uh, I'm just sort of concerned because the medevac, can, uh, the medevac builds have only just started. We've only got one medevac coming out at a time. He's struggling a little bit for his minerals right now just because the economy is in a little bit of a, uh, a decline because of the fact that there are only 37 SCVs and it looks like he is going to push out. So keep in mind that these units are actually quite low, uh, or some of them are quite low in their HP. They do catch out a mother chip core though, which is quite nice for Gunslinger and we'll see if he's able to push in because there is a, well, what have we got out? We got two Colossi, there's no extended Demolance just as of yet. But uh, that is on the way. That's just over halfway done. And we'll probably see that kick in by the time the Gunslinger actually gets across the map. Looks like the Oracle was able to finally bust out of jail here. Comes across to try and deal some damage. Unfortunately, uh, they aren't as powerful as they used to be. I wonder if anyone uh, got to play around with the Oracles when they did ridiculous amounts of damage against uh, buildings and that kind of thing. That was an interesting phase of the Hot Spader. But uh, um, unfortunately, <laughs> for Scanny wasn't really able to get too much done. Medivac's now starting to fall... Uh, well, it's not fall out. I'm starting to uh, come out of the uh, the starport here. Still a little bit slow on the production, but of course, uh, you know, if he can get some damage done here, it looks as if he is pushing across to what is normally the third base of our Protoss play. Normally you would see that by now, especially with the way the Protoss players like to play in Heart of the Swarm. You can be very aggressive with your expansions. Your economy always looks very good because you do have the Mothership Core available to help out with defense. Now, Gunslinger is going to push across. The problem is, is that there are three Colossi here. He hasn't actually seen seen that they're there yet. Now he has and he's going to be a little bit worried. He will need to get out of there. There is no way he can deal with this uh, I'm not sure why he's pushing into that. There is a wall of force fields here, in fact, and he's going to get absolutely decimated. There are a couple of extra force fields, and I have no idea what is going on there, but a couple of zealots have walked in and run into the mineral line there. That's part of the reason why he was perhaps a bit distracted. Loses a lot of his bioforce that is here at the, uh, the natural base of Scanner. With some marines that were back home to defend, it looks like he was able to uh, at least salvage some of his economy, but the problem is, is now he's still at a... Uh, uh, pretty decent deficit on the work account. Like, I mean, at this stage, you probably want to get uh, your third base up and running by now. And he's going to have a little bit of trouble in uh, powering up to try and defend against this incoming attack. As we mentioned before, the Vikings are still... Uh, there we are. We finally got two of those on the way. We're throwing down some extra racks to get some more production going. But the question will be, is he going to be able to deal with this force once it comes across the map? Now, for the moment, Scan has not gone too hard on his upgrades. He's got just the plus one weapons at the moment, but when you factor in that that uh, is a really decent upgrade right at the start for a Protoss when you've got a lot of Colossi out, uh, we'll see if he is able to just run across and uh, deal with this 2-2 Terran. The bio, of course, with 2-2 is nice, but I mean, with uh, not too many medevacs out, I think that uh, Scan is going to have his, uh, his way here with our Facebook Terran Gunslinger in quite a lot of trouble. The Colossi now just pushing through. Bit of stutter step there to blast their way through the mineral the uh, the marine line of our Terran there. Looks like a couple of Vikings are here to try and defend. And while one Colossus does go down, it looks like that is going to be the end of that because the SCVs are going to have to retreat. And the Colossi say, yum, yum, yes, please. Eating up all of those SCVs. Going to blast down the rest of this. And there is really not too much that Gunslinger can do. So unfortunately, just the production slipping up a little bit there. Getting a little bit caught out by some, uh, some Zealous that came across too. And it looks like Facebook is uh, going to go into a small deficit right at the start of this game here in week number five at the After Hours Gaming League. And, uh, well, we'll see. We'll go into the next game very shortly. I, I know I'm sort of calling this quite early, but, I mean, I'm not really sure what uh, Gunslinger can do from here. Unfortunately, his supply is at 56. His opponent is at 114 with four Colossi. We've got uh, two more on the way. There are some more units that are being uh, produced down here at the Proxy Pylon, but, uh, you know, there is really not too much that is going to go on that will go favorably for Gunslinger right now. He actually attacks his own supply, uh, his own starport, I think that was. That was an interesting tactic there. Says, you know what? You've got me. I'm gonna take out my buildings myself. The Colossi walking in. 
just strutting their stuff, going to see, uh, there it is, the GG comes out from Guns Gunslinger. So we'll go into game number two in a moment and see if our next player from Facebook is able to uh, keep up with Team Ernst & Young or if they will continue on and go to a 2-0 streak. We'll find out in just a moment. 